Welcome to another floppy deep dive and thank you for joining me today on another episode of What's on That Floppy. And what is What's on That Floppy? What's on That Floppy? It's where I deep dive into my original collection of software I downloaded from BBS in the 80s and play these games again for the first time in 30 plus years and I share the journey with you. Now look at classic games we all heard of, the games you never even knew existed. And today we're going to be looking at six games that came out between 1983 and 1987 for the Commodore 64. And also remind me to tell you about one game, you had to have a surfboard just to be able to play it. So if you love nostalgia and retro computers and retro games, this is the channel for you. So please pull up a chair, grab a joystick, and let's get started. So first we're going to be playing Water Ski 3D on the Commodore 64, classic game that was released in 1984. And this game has a unique third person perspective driving gameplay where you have to control the speedboat while carrying the water skier attached to the back of the boat and it reminds me of Night Driver on the Atari 2600. As we dive into the game, we see our objective is to complete six laps of a marked course while avoiding mines and, and staying within the buoys that mark the route. But be careful, if we go too fast or too slow, the boat will explode or the skier will sink. And ramps are also a fun element in this game, allowing the skier to jump in the air for bonus points. And everyone has their own opinions, but some reviewers we've read up on found this game's kind of boring or could have been better. And who doesn't love the Jaws touch with the shark appearing as we crash our boat? And the game is pretty fun, but it's very easy. And the graphics and the sound may be low notch, but remember this game came out in 1984. And for its time, it had a decent 3D effect and was a novel approach to a racing genre. Overall, Water Ski 3D, I give it a thumbs up for being a classic game that still provides some fun gameplay. It's a game worth revisiting and remembering for its uniqueness and memories it brings back from the early days of video gaming. That's it. That's 3D Water Ski. I think you guys get an idea what that one is all about. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now we're going to return to the medieval air today with the night games for Commodore 64. And this game features eight self-contained small games and I'll show you how some of them are played. There's two games that involve shooting. The crossbow event challenge used to hit the rotating targets by moving the crosshair. And once you master this, you can move on the archery where you have to hit targets that move left to right and making timing crucial. And then the other six games involve one-on-one -on -one combat. You could choose from swords, ball and chain, axe, and pike. And the objective of this game is to make 10 hits on your opponent to win the battle. And timing is crucial here, so you have to be quick with the jabs and the shields. And what I like about these games is they have these different backdrops that give you that feeling of being in the medieval arena. And you can hear the crowd cheering you on and the graphics make you feel like you're there. And another great thing about this game is that you can play them against either the computer or with another human. So if you have a friend or family member who loves medieval games, it's a perfect game that y'all could play together. But overall, night games for the Commodore 64 was a fun challenging game even though it was a budget game that will test your hand-eye coordination and timing skills and with eight different games to choose from you'll always be energized so why not give it a try and check it out Today we will play the classic game Dragon's Lair 2 Escape from Singe's Castle on the Commodore 64. And this was developed by Interplay Productions and released by Electronic Arts in the US in 1987. And this game was the sequel to the top rated Dragon's Lair game. And the game follows the adventures of Dirk the Daring, a heroic knight who must save Princess Daphne from the clutches of the evil dragon Singe. And the game's known for its challenging gameplay, credible graphics, and outstanding music by the legendary Rob Hubbard. The first level is the Rapids, which is particularly tough, and, and mastering it requires precision and quick reflexes, which I don't have. 
Once you get past it, the game becomes more manageable, although it still offers a considerable challenge. I never got past it in the whirlpools. Uh, the music in the game is fantastic. It sets the tone for each level. The medieval music that plays between the levels, adding to the immersive experience. In fact, some consider it to be the best music in any Commodore 64 game. What do you think? And let's talk about some of the reviews from people who played the game. Some found it highly addictive and challenging, but not impossible. And once they mastered it, it became an excellent and fun game. While others found it very frustrating and some needed help to get past that second level. But those who love the game appreciate its last ability, which kept them returning for more. And in conclusion, Dragon Lairs 2 Escape from Singe's Castle is an excellent game with fantastic graphics, music, and gameplay. And the game has stood the test of time and is still highly enjoyable. If you're looking for a classic game with a considerable challenge, this is definitely one to check out. The next game on our floppy is Neoclip 64, and if you're a classic arcade game fan, you'll love this game. This game takes the best parts of the classic game Defender and makes them even better. And the objective is to destroy vital elements of the city below, including a range of targets that are spread across four alien landscapes, each with varying targets to eliminate. And the game starts easy, but as you progress, the levels become more challenging without becoming frustrating. And one of the best things about this game is the graphics. They are straightforward, vivid, and the use of color is excellent. Even for a game released in 1983, the picture holds up surprisingly well. The sound effects are also well suited to the action and add to the game's overall experience. And the gameplay is similar to Defender and other classic arcade games, but has exciting twists. For example, when you change direction, your spaceship skids a bit, which can be frustrating but adds a layer of challenge to the game. And if you enjoy racing through ever varying alien landscapes and destroying cities and avoiding missiles and foreign fighters, in that case, this game will hit the spot. Neocalypse 64 is definitely a game worth playing, even in 2023. It is a great example of what many companies and game developers did so well back in the glory days of Commodore. Once you start playing, you'll be hooked in no time. And before you know it, you'll be up late in the night trying to beat your high score. So there you have it, folks. If you're a classic arcade game fan, you must check out Neoclip 64. It's a blast from the past that still holds up today, and it's a lot of fun to play. So let's move on to the next game. Welcome to the vibrant and bustling streets of New York City. In this action-packed game, you play as Ed Hick, a first-timer in the big city who takes a day trip to explore the sights and sounds of the city that never sleeps. And as Ed drives around his red atomic Plymouth Continental through the city streets, he has to avoid traffic and tow trucks that can damage his car or he can run out of gas, leave him stranded and out of luck. But fear not, Ed can always visit the bank for more cash or gas and keep his adventure going. And in New York City, the objective is to visit two buildings as indicated in the status bar. And each building house a mini game that must be completed before it's deemed seen. But parking can be challenging. Players can find a parking space close to the building and walk in. And if the parking meter expires, your car will be towed away to the lot and he'll have to make his way to retrieve it. And the game focuses on a lot of mini games, including a subway where you have to collect a token before boarding the train, the Central Park Zoo where you got to round up animals, and the Automat where you got to order food before other diners. But beware, Ed also has to dodge bank robbers firing at us as he tries to reach the teller to withdraw some cash. And it's a mixed action of simulation and time management. New York City, it's a fun game. Keep you on your toes as you explore the city's iconic landmarks and complete many games. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So we're looking at that wave and saying, hey bud, <laughs> let's party. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get this jacket? So this is Surf Champ. This is the one that you have to actually have a surfboard that you would place on the keyboard to be able to play this game because they would push the proper keys to be able to surf. So it's a little bit harder without the surfboard. I never had it because this was actually downloaded off of BBS and it's not original, it's a cracked version. So I'm gonna show you the game 
but it's more interesting the story behind the game. And you can go in there, select your different names, sex, your age, and all that different stuff too. I'm just going to leave that all the same and move on. And then you can select which kind of board you have. I'm going to go, I don't know really much about surfing. I'm going to go with the twin fin. And I'm just going to use my summer suit. And we are going to go, we move it. We'll leave it at north. And it looks like you just kind of go out here and get in the waves. And then when you do, if I could show it, I'm not sure. Somehow a certain process of keys gets you to surf, which is hard to show when you don't have the surfboard. No luck. But this is Surf Champ, and I'll show you a little bit more information on the besides of it. But I want to at least show you the game. But I never could figure it out. If someone knows how to actually get them to surf without the surfboard, I'd love to hear about it and what exactly how you would make that happen. So that's it. Let's move on to the next one. Those brought back some great memories. And if this video gave you warm, fuzzy feelings from being a kid with your Commodore 64, then do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe so you're part of every retro journey. And if you want a copy of this floppy for your collection, join my Patreon and get an exclusive download link for what's on that floppy. And you can also follow me all week long on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or just go to my website where everything's there on floppy beat dive.com also check out my other videos for more retro goodness and later much